The Nature of Mathematics, Carl J. Smith, 4th edition. This is a solid textbook, and in this video, we are going to take a look at it. But before we do, I just have to take a little bit of a whiff. Oh, amazing, amazing. So this is a book that most people can just jump into. Um, you can probably just jump into it and start learning mathematics. If I can find this book, I will leave a link in the description. I don't know if it's still available. All right. Nature of Mathematics. Carl J. Smith, Santa Rosa Junior College. Let's look at the copyright. 1980, The Nature of Modern Mathematics. Actually, it goes back farther than that. So it looks like 73, wow. Wow, so this book, um, you know, has survived, you know, a while. Let's see what it says here. This book was written to create a positive attitude towards mathematics, a realization that mathematics is not an endless procession of dull manipulations, theorems, proofs, and irrelevant topics. Rather than simply presenting the technical details needed to proceed to the next course, the book attempts to give insight into what mathematics is, what it accomplishes, and how it is pursued as a human enterprise. I frequently encounter people who tell me about their unpleasant experiences with mathematics. I have a true sympathy for these people, and I recall one of my elementary school teachers who assigned additional arithmetic problems as punishment. This can only create negative attitudes towards mathematics, which is indeed unfortunate. If elementary school teachers and parents have a positive attitude towards mathematics, their children will see some of the beauty of the subject. I want students to come away from this course with the feeling that mathematics can be pleasant, useful, and practical, and enjoyed for its own sake. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. So let's take a look at what this book actually contains. So it says here, The Nature of Patterns and Inductive Reasoning. And then we have The Nature of Sets and Deductive Reasoning. The nature of calculators and computers. The nature of numbers. The nature of daily arithmetic. The nature of algebra. It's a very interesting book. The nature of geometry. The nature of counting. The nature of probability. Talk about a diverse set of topics. The nature of statistics. So this book just has so much Mathematics, and it's not particularly challenging, the nature of mathematical modeling. I mean, it, it can be, but, oh, and you have answers to the odd-numbered problems, uh, index of special problems, index of mathematical projects. Let, let's go to the back and look at those answers first. Start in the back of the book, and you can see that, um, you know, the author does indeed provide answers. Look at these truth tables. I mean, so there are answers in the back of the book to the odd-numbered problems. That is extremely, extremely beneficial. That makes this an excellent book for anyone who wants to learn knowledge that can be found in this book. Um, notice the layout is interesting, the color choice. It's all kind of like muted tones, it's only a few colors and it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice, it's simple. Um, I don't know, it's got a certain feel to it. I'm just gonna give it a little whiff here. Oh, that's amazing. But you can see some of the problems are very, very basic. It's, it's not, um, supposed to be hard. You know, anyone should be able to pick up this book and learn um, something from it. Um, if you're looking for like, you know, math that you can actually learn and understand, this is a pretty good book. Here's, here's, the, here's the section on sets, and this is a really good introduction. Here's the empty set. It says, the empty set contains no elements as, and is denoted by, so it's like the set containing nothing, or that symbol there. The universal set contains all the elements under consideration in a given discussion and is denoted by U. Cool. Here's the defined subset. 
Oh, there's, there's George Cantor. Look at that. Let's look at this. George Cantor was the originator of set theory and of the study of transfinite numbers. When he first published his paper on the theory of sets in 1874, it was very controversial because it was innovative and because it differed from current mathematical thinking. One of Cantor's former teachers, Leopold Kronecker, was particularly strong in his criticism not only of Cantor's work, okay, but also of Cantor himself. Cantor believed that the essence of mathematics lies in its freedom, but in the final analysis, he was not able to withstand the pressure. He underwent a series of mental breakdowns and died in a mental hospital in 1918. Wow, that is dark. That is dark. That is dark. And he, he did produce, there's some really hard math uh, surrounding Cantor. So, um, yeah, yeah, nuts. Nuts. Literally nuts. That, that wasn't supposed to be a joke. Crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. So this is a book, again, that just has just... I don't know what the word is. I just want—I want to use the word hodgepodge. But I don't know if, I don't know if that's a, the right word. It just has a, a large variety of of topics, and I, I guess it's kind of similar to like a finite math course or like um, you know one of those courses. Th those courses tend to cover a lot of topics that you won't find in other math courses. They're kind of like, hey, here's some cool math from various areas. And they're kind of fun. They're kind of fun because of that. Kind of fun. Oh, here's Ramanujan. I, I like these little mathematician things. Let's, let's read this. Ramanujan, who lived only 33 years, was a mathematical prodigy of great originality. He was largely self-taught, but was discovered in 1913 by the eminent British mathematician G.H. Hardy. Hardy brought Ramanujan to Cambridge, and in 1918, Ramanujan became the first Indian to become a fellow of the Royal Society. An often told story about Hardy and Ramanujan was that when Hardy visited Ramanujan in the hospital, he came in a taxi bearing the number 1729. He asked Ramanujan if there was anything interesting about this number. Without hesitation, Ramanujan said there was. It is the smallest positive integer that can be represented in two different ways as a sum of two cubes. 1 cubed plus 12 cubed, or <laughs> 9 cubed plus 10 cubed. Again, it's the smallest positive integer that can be represented in two different ways as the sum of two cubes. And that is pretty wicked that, um, you know, he was able to, to just spit that out um, right, right on the spot. The Ramanujan story is, is an interesting one. Um, Legendary, just legendary. Anyways, uh, interesting book. As you can see, it's got a bunch of different topics, logic, um, sets, just geometry, um, some algebra, arithmetic, uh, just a lot of math. If I find it, I'll leave a link in the description. Also, I have math courses. Uh, they're on Udemy, but if you get them, use the links from uh, my videos or my website, mathsorcerer.com. I've got tons of courses. And subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. This is an interesting book. Um, it's got a lot of cool math. I hope it's been helpful. Take care.